Is all. Commissioner, I call Tracy Walsh. Ms Walsh, can I ask whether you'd prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? Uh, the oath. Do you mind standing then? <coughs> Thank you. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. <coughs> Very much. Do sit down. Yes, Ms. Orr. Ms. Walsh, your full name is Tracy Lee Walsh. Yes, it is. And you live at an address in Marupna in Victoria that's known to the Commission? Yes, I do. And what is your occupation, Ms Walsh? An administration assistant at Rumbalara Aboriginal Cooperative. Thank you. And did you receive a summons to attend and give evidence today? Yes, I did. Do you have that summons there? Yes, I do. I tender the summons, Commissioner. <coughs> give it 4.143, the summons to Ms Walsh. And Ms Walsh, did you make a statement to the Royal Commission dated the 26th of June this year? Yes, I did. And do you have that statement there? Yes, I do. Are the contents of that statement true and correct? Yes. I tender that statement. Exhibit 4.144, the statement of Ms Walsh. Ms Walsh, uh, you are an Aboriginal woman? Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander. Uh, and can you explain where Marupna is, where you live? Marupna is approximately two hours from Melbourne. And can you tell us a little bit about your education, Ms Walsh? I went to Wodonga High, went to half, uh, Year 10, halfway. Uh, and you're working now, you tell us, as an administration assistant at Rumbalara? Yes, I am. And can you explain to the Commission what the work of Rumbalara is? Rumbalara is a community-based Indigenous organisation looking after the health and mental health of the wider Indigenous community in Shepparton. Um, we have a dental, medical centre, family services, justice service, a KMS program which looks after pregnant women. There's a, we're a whole range covering from Shepparton down to Wodonga and up to Mildura. And what does your work at Rumbalara involve? I do the reception, which is answering the phones, but not just that. I book the cars and I also do the booking for our patients that attend medical, um, medical appointments in Melbourne. And in 2005, were you employed at Rumbalara? Yes, I was. Uh, and what was your role at that time? I was um, the receptionist administration assistant in the administration department. Now, Ms Walsh, do you recall learning in 2005 that a representative from the Aboriginal Community Benefit Fund would be visiting Rumbalara? Yes. And uh, do you recall how you learned that that person was coming to Rumbalara? We had posters put up in our medical centre and also brochures could be found at the reception desk. And what do you recall about, firstly, those posters? Uh, on, the, uh, on the posters it had... Uh, the rainbow serpent, which is very important to the Indigenous community. Um, it was right around the poster and on the brochures. And what got me the most was the little family in the middle. <coughs> they were all holding hands and family is so important to the Indigenous community. And do you recall the colours that were uh, used the in the background colours was cream, the colour of the snake was uh, red, black and the, the family was uh, just sort of like a black print. And do you recall any of the words that were used on the posters or brochures? Uh, uh, Aboriginal funeral funds, and it had the date it would be there, be at Rumbalara. And what did the posters and the brochures say to you about uh, ACBF as an organisation? That it was an Indigenous organisation because of the word Aboriginal. And did the images or the colours on the material have any bearing on your interpretation? Well, the rainbow serpents in, is important because that's one of the creators of all the rivers and, and just the family in the middle was more important. And did you think that ACBF was run by Aboriginal people? Yes, I did. Uh, and did you think that ACBF's insurance was specifically directed to Aboriginal people? Yes. Uh, were those things important to you? Very, because it's an Aboriginal organisation. I, I like to support other Indigenous 
com community organisations. Uh, and having seen those posters and brochures uh, and having formed the views that you've just given evidence about, did you decide to go and see the ACBF representative when they came to Rumbalara? Yes, I did. And why did you decide to go see them? Well, at, at the time I had a, a friend, Leslie, pass away. He looked after my mum and dad. He was like a son to my mum and dad. And um, I didn't want... The, uh, his family had to go in their superannuation because he didn't have any kind of funeral funds. So I didn't want, want to um, uh, have my mum and dad, who were just pensioners, all my, all my sisters or brothers, have to have to do the same thing. Do you mean for you? For me, yeah. yes. Yes, uh, And do you recall how old you would have been at this time, roughly, Ms Walsh? Not that I can recall, sorry. How old are you now, Ms Walsh? 53. Thank you. And had you had any form of funeral insurance before this time? No, I did not. And did you then meet with the ACBF representative at Rumbalara? Yes, I did. It was just like, it wasn't, we didn't have appointment times. We just went in and had it. Dis a discussion with him. And do you recall anything about the appearance of that person you spoke with? Very same complexion as me. He was he was male and yet. Yeah. And did you think that he was Aboriginal? Yes, I did. Now, what do you remember about the discussion that you had with this person at Rumbalara? Just about um, how how good the Aboriginal funeral service was for Aboriginal people. This is the representative, not myself. Mm. And so I just, you know, wanted to join up and I explained to him what happened to my friend. And do you recall how long, roughly, that discussion took? Would be about a half an hour. Wouldn't be any more than that. And do you recall giving that person any information about yourself in the course of that uh, My name, address, date of birth medical history. And do you remember any discussion in that meeting about how much money would be available for your funeral expenses if you joined up? Not at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you remember any discussion about who you wanted your funeral benefit paid to? Yes, my mum, Pamela Fay Walsh. And do you remember being given any documents by that person Not at the in time. that meeting? And during that meeting, uh, did you agree to take out funeral insurance with ACBF? Yes, I did. And what did you think you would be entitled to under that policy? Uh, the policy um, plus any money that was left over would go to my uh, family to pay for for the funeral and and so on. Yeah. And what did you think would happen after this meeting? that um, I would get forms stating my policy and what I got and what I was entitled to. And did your parents take out family <coughs> insurance around yes, they the did. same time? Yes, it was for the same reason that Leslie passed away and they had nothing at the time and they were just pensioners. And do you recall who they took out funeral insurance? Insurance line. Thank you. Now, could I ask you to look, Ms Walsh, at the first annexure to your witness statement, which is RCD 0024-0016-0003. Yep, yes, the fun Aboriginal Community Funeral Plan. Yes, plan holder application form. Do you have yes. that there? Yes, I do. Do you know what this document is, Ms Walsh? Uh, it's my plan for my uh, policy. Now, if we turn uh, to the second and third pages, if we could have those on the screen together, 0004 and 0005. Is this your <coughs> handwriting, Ms Walsh? No, it's not. And do you recall how this information came to be in this form? As far as I can recall, I think I, I received it in the mail. Okay. And we see information on the left-hand page there uh, about your address, which has been blocked out, and your date of birth, which has also been blocked out. Was that information which you have on the document in front of you correct? Yes. Uh, and under the heading payee, towards the bottom of that page, uh, do we see there that your mother is listed uh, as the nominated person to receive a payout if you passed away? Yes. And that was your intention? Yes. 
And then if we turn to 0006, we see there a page entitled Health Statement. Yes. And this page includes <coughs> information about health conditions and there is a tick next to mental or nervous condition. Yes. And details provided are depression, antidepressants. Which I'm on is Arapax. Yes, so that was correct at that time? Yes, I, yes it is. And I felt I, I was um, wanted to be upfront. Yes. So I you, wasn't ashamed of having mental health yes. issues yet. So you gave that information to ACDF? Yes. And we see that recorded in this form. Now, uh, we see that the form has a signature on it, which has been blocked out on the screen, but you have that in front of you. Yes. Is that your signature on the form? Yes, it is. And do you think that you might have signed this form after it had been sent to you already filled out? Not that I can recall, sorry. You, you don't recall? No. Yes, but that's your signature? Yes, it is. Yes, and we see the date of the 30th of November 2005 next to your signature? Yes. Uh, now... Can I ask that we go back to the first page of this form, uh, 0003? Now, does the imagery on this page of the form with the rainbow serpent around the edge and the family in the centre look like the imagery that you had seen on the ACBF That's posters and brochures? Exactly right. Yes. That, that's the imagery you yes. saw? Now, uh, do you recall uh, being contacted by ACBF about your health condition? Not that I recall, sorry. Could I ask you to turn to the second uh, exhibit to your statement, RCD 0024 0016 0001? Oh, yes. Yes, I've got that. Now, this is a letter to you from ACBF dated the 15th of December 2005. And you've been shown a copy of this letter at the time that you put your statement together, is that right? Yes. But you don't remember receiving no. this letter? No. Uh, but we can see from this letter on the first page that ACBF told you that due to your depression and the medication you were taking, they could not give you a benefit amount of $12,000, but could give you a benefit amount of $8,000. Do you yes. see that? Yes. And they also told you that your fortnightly payments in the following paragraph were going to be $36. Yes. Now, could I ask you just to turn back to your first exhibit, uh, RCD 0024-0016-0004? <coughs> Now, if we look at the second box on the page, we see there, does it look to you as though your benefit amount in the third column from the right was originally listed as $12,000 and that has been struck through and changed to $8,000? Yes. Uh, and does it also look to you uh, that after you'd received that letter, <coughs> a decision was made to change your payments from $18 a fortnight to $36 a fortnight. Yes. And do you see also that your health level appears to have been originally described as health level one, and that has been struck through, and you have been assigned health level three? Yes. Now, having received that letter from ACBF telling you that your fortnightly payments would be $36. Did you commence making those payments in that amount? Yes, I did. And what did you think would happen if you died before those payments had got to $8,000, which was your benefit amount? Get the $8,000. Yes. And what did you think would happen uh, if you paid more than $8,000 before you died? That it will go to my family. And did you make those payments to ACBF on a regular basis, yes, Ms Walsh? Yes, I did, Walsh? every fortnight. And were there a small number of occasions where you missed those payments? Yes, there was, but I doubled up um, $72 the next fortnight. 
And what did you think the consequences would be if you stopped making payments? I would lose the whole amount, no matter how much I paid. Commissioner, that might be a convenient yes. time. If we come back uh, at two o'clock. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Yes. <coughs> Yes, Ms. Ms Walsh, we heard in your evidence before lunch uh, that you took out the policy with ACBF at the end of 2005. Do you recall that? Yes. Uh, and you started making your $36 a fortnight payments after that time. Yes. Now, can I ask you to look at the third exhibit to your statement, ACBF 0001 0148. Now, this is a certificate in your name issued by ACBF, Ms Walsh? Yes. And we see that the certificate reads, this certificate is awarded to Tracy Lee Walsh, nom nominee under plan, Aboriginal Community Funeral Plan, to acknowledge they have attained their chosen benefit amount of $8,000. And we see that the date of issue is the 14th of April, 2008. Do you recall receiving this certificate, <coughs> Ms Walsh? Yes, that's very clear to me. And what did you understand this certificate to mean? That I, I had paid my $8,000 policy and, yeah. What did you think would happen to any money you paid after this time? <coughs> any money that was left over or paid over that amount would go to my family. And why did you think that ACBF was telling you that you'd paid the $8,000? Um, just to say that I paid it. It wasn't really important to me, so. And in 2008, did you move from Marupna to Wodonga? Yes, I did. And why did you move to Wodonga? My f uh, father um, had, had Alzheimer's and my mother had um, broken her collarbone. So my father wasn't sort of mentally well and my mother just couldn't, be, couldn't shower herself. So I resigned from my position and went to look after him. Uh, and when you went to look after them in Wodonga, uh, did you work? No, I, I couldn't work. They both couldn't, be, my dad, father couldn't be left alone and Mum couldn't manage Dad by herself. But what was your form of income at that time? The carer's pension from Centrelink. Now, throughout that period when you were caring for your parents and receiving carer's pension, did you continue to make your fortnightly payments to ACBF? Yes, I did. And did you care for your parents in Wodonga until about 2010? Yes. And at that time, did your parents move into aged care? Yes, they moved into Bupa Aged Care in Wodonga. And when your parents moved into aged care, did you move back to Marupna? Yes, I did. Uh, and did you apply for another job at Rumbalara? Yes, I did. And were you successful in getting yes. that job? Now, do you recall telephoning ACBF in about 2012 uh, in relation to the amount that you were covered for under the plan? Not that I can recall, sir. All right. Now, could I ask you to look at your witness statement and paragraph 18 of your witness statement? Perhaps if we could have WIT 0001-0072-0004 and 0005 on the screen at the same time. Do you 
see there in paragraph 18 of your statement towards the bottom of the first page, Ms Walsh, you explained that in about 2012 you got worried about how much you were covered for as you didn't think that $8,000 would be enough to cover, cover the cost of your funeral <coughs> and you tried to increase the maximum benefit amount under the plan. And you say that you remember calling ACBF to ask whether they would increase the amount of the plan but to the best of my memory, ACBF did not increase it. Is that correct? No, they didn't increase it. Yes. And you did make this call to them in about 2012? Yes, I did. Uh, and you asked for them to increase the amount of your plan and they did not. Is that no, right? No, they did not. Then in 2014, did your father pass away? Yes, he did. Uh, and who organised your father's funeral? Myself and my younger sister, Kelly. And how much did your father's funeral cost? Approximately $9,000. And did that cause you to have concerns about your $8,000 funeral plan? Yes, it did greatly, it did. Can you explain those concerns? Well, when, when we went in and we purchased the coffin, which was about $5,000. The flowers were 300 The booklets, I can't remember how much they were. And I just knew that I wasn't going to be covered by the time, touch wood, that it's not soon when I pass away. I knew that I wasn't going to have enough money. And what did you do as a result of those concerns? Um, as best that I can recall, I can't recontacted Aboriginal Funeral Funds again to see if I could have it increased. And do you recall what they said to you? Uh, not that I couldn't recall, sorry. You deal with this in paragraph 21 of your statement, which is on the right-hand side. Yes. Do you see there you say, not long after my dad passed away, I called ACBF. Oh, yes, I do recall that, sorry. Spoke to a receptionist about yes. increasing my maximum benefit amount. Yes. I remember that the receptionist said she was sorry to hear about my parents. Yes, I remember Cannot that. remember anything else about my conversation but ACBF didn't increase my maximum benefit amount. That's right. Then in June 2016, did your mother pass away? Yes, she did. And who organised your mother's funeral? Uh, myself and my younger sister. And how much did your mum's funeral uh, cost? That went up to uh, increase another $2,000. <coughs> so around, uh, approximately around about $11,000. And around that time, did you start getting some assistance from the Consumer Action Law Centre? Yes, I did. Uh, and did you find out uh, through the Consumer Action Legal Centre at that time that ACBF was not an Aboriginal organisation? Yes, I did, and I was shocked. And did Consumer Action send a letter to ACBF on your behalf in about November 2016? Yes, I did. And you've annexed that letter to your statement as annexure 4, RCD 0024-0016-0008. Is that the letter dated at the 11th of November? Yes. Yeah. Is that the letter that you understand Consumer Action sent to uh, ACBF on your behalf at this time? Yes. And if we turn to the second page of that letter, We see there under the heading misleading and deceptive conduct that consumer action alleged that you had been misled into thinking that ACBF was an Aboriginal run organisation. Yes. Uh, and that you also had thought that all of the money you put into the plan would be available on your death. Do you see that in the first paragraph under the heading? Yes, I do. Then did Consumer Action tell you uh, that they received a response to this letter from ACBF? Yes, they did. And you've annexed that response as an extra five to your witness statement, RCD 0024-0016-0011. Yes. <coughs> and did Consumer Action discuss the contents of this letter with you? Yes, they did. And if we t start with the first page of this letter, we see um, that the lawyers for ACBF told you 
in the paragraph two up from the heading background, Ms Walsh's plan provides a benefit of $8,000 in exchange for a fortnightly payment of $36. As at today's date, Ms Walsh has paid $10,152 in total under her plan. Yes. And do you recall Consumer Action discussing yes, that I with did. you? Yes, I And if we turn then to 0019, this is a lengthy letter, but if we turn to 0019 in the document, we see there the response of ACBF to the allegation of misleading and deceptive conduct. And do you see, Ms Walsh, under the sentence, it follows that the reliance has to be reasonable, that ACBF's lawyers said to Consumer Action, you have not provided any evidence on which a claim of misleading and deceptive conduct can be made out. There is no basis for Ms Walsh to think that the word plan would necessarily mean that all of the fortnightly payments she made for the duration she was a plan holder would be repaid. The word plan simply describes an effort to address a particular contingency. It does not invite any conclusion one way or the other about the availability or refunding of money under the plan. This is especially so in this case, given the many, many interactions between ACBF and Ms Walsh over the years, the explanations of the plan provided to Ms Walsh on those occasions, <coughs> and the documents that were in fact provided to Ms Walsh to explain the plan. Now, pausing there, Ms Walsh, the interactions between you and ACBF over the years, were the interactions that you had with them about your request to increase the payment amount, firstly? Yes, it was. Or and and it, secondly, about when you could not make your repayments? That's, that's right. Yes, your payments, I should say. Yes. And you were arranging for a double payment to follow. Yes. <coughs> uh, and the lawyers for ACBF went on to say in this letter, the documentary evidence provided by ACBF shows Ms Walsh was provided with all of the relevant plan documents, including the information guide, the plan rules and the application form on a number of occasions. These documents plainly indicate the true nature of the plan. In any event, even in the event of some hypothetical wrongdoing by ACBF, reliance on the wrongdoing at this point would be unreasonable. Ms Walsh received all of the plan documents in 2005, but took 11 years to approach a legal advisor to obtain an explanation of terms. ACBF has not made a statement or engaged in conduct that was false or misleading. It follows that any claim by Ms Walsh, based on some misleading or deceptive conduct, is bound to fail. <coughs> and then over the page at 0020, Ms Walsh, we see under the heading Resolution, third paragraph down, the documentary evidence discloses no wrongdoing by ACBF and in fact makes it clear that Ms Walsh fully understood the plan and acknowledged and declared that she did to ACBF. Further, ACBF's established practices when dealing with customers face to face leave no doubt Ms Walsh received a full verbal explanation of the plan and its rules. And over the page, 0021, ACBF takes nothing more seriously than the rights and treatment of its customers, which is reflective in the massive investment it makes in compliance and staff training. This is why it does not hesitate to instruct us to categorically reject your claims and offers to settle those claims as those offers to settle are made on the premise of allegations ACBF knows to be false. ACBF continues to be dismayed by groups such as yours purporting to represent the interests of ACBF's very own customers. Any allegation that ACBF is guilty of any wrongdoing cannot be sustained. Please cease your campaign against our client. So that was the letter that Consumer Action received <coughs> in response to their letter to ACBF on your behalf? Yes, it is. Uh, what did you think when you were told about this letter, Ms Walsh? I was just, um, my personal thoughts, just disgusted. And in March 2017, Consumer Action sent another letter to ACBF on your behalf. 
Yes, I did. And you've annexed that as Exhibit 6 to your statement, RCD 0024-0016-0022. Yes. <coughs> now, as far as you know, Ms Walsh, was there any reply from ACBF to this letter on the 8th of March? Not that I can recall. Thank you. Uh, and this was a letter in which Consumer Action asked ACBF to review its categorisation of your cover and your associated payment requirements. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Now, has Consumer Action recently assisted you to lodge a dispute with ACBF with the Financial Ombudsman Service? Yes, I have. And have you annexed as Annexure 7 to your statement a copy of submissions filed by Consumer Action with the Financial Ombudsman Service on your behalf? Yes, I have. And that is FOS 0039 0001 0014? Yes. So those are the submissions on your behalf to FOS? Yes, it is. And in Annexure 8 to your statement, you've annexed a copy of ACBF's response to those submissions dated the 7th of June this year, <coughs> FOS 0039 0039. Yes. And you see from the third paragraph in that letter, ACBF maintains categorically that it has not engaged in misleading or deceptive conduct or unconscionable conduct or ever discriminated against Ms Tracy Walsh. Do you see that? Yes, I do. And then at 0141, we see in paragraph 16 that ACBF said to FOS, ACBF utilises colours and images associated with the Aboriginal people and indeed the word Aboriginal, on the basis that it is a service which was set up for the benefit of Aboriginal people. At no time was it inferred to Ms Walsh that ACBF was an Aboriginal company, and in fact, the opposite is true. You see that? Yes. And at 0145, under the heading ACBF position towards the end of this letter, we see that ACBF said to FOS, <coughs> the continued allegations against ACBF and suggestion that Ms Walsh's case is appropriate means to require the production, uh, sorry, that the, Ms Walsh's case is appropriate means to require the production of statistical information and defence of ACBF globally is both vexatious and an abusive process. So these were the submissions made by ACBF in response, <coughs> in response to your FOS complaint? Yes, they were. Now, having um, made these submissions to FOS on the 7th of June this year, did Consumer Action receive from ACBF an offer to settle your dispute with them? Yes, they did. And you've annexed a copy of that offer as Exhibit 9 to your statement which is CALC, C-A-L-C, 0001, Now, the offer that was made to you was an offer that your cover, we see this from the final paragraph, your insurance cover would be increased to $10,000 you would not be required to make any further payments to ACBF to maintain your cover, and you were to withdraw your matter before the Financial Ombudsman Service. Yes. <coughs> and you were given 14 days to consider that offer? That's correct. And have you told ACBF that you will accept that offer? Uh, yes, I have. Yes. Uh, and have you, through Consumer Action, uh, told ACBF that you will discontinue your dispute in FOS? Yes, I will. Now, before you reached this agreement with ACBF, were you worried that if you stopped paying ACBF uh, for your funeral plan, you would lose all of the money that you had paid? I was told I would lose the money I paid. And was that a matter of concern for you, Ms Walsh? 
Yes, it was. Um, did you feel that you had any choice about whether to continue to pay ACBF for your plan? No, I felt like they had me over a barrel. In what way, Ms Walsh? Well, if I don't, if I drop it, I lose all this money that I've paid to, since 2005 that I can't afford to lose. And it's my money. It's not their money, it's my money. And you had been told by ACBF in the correspondence that they sent to Consumer Action in December 2016 that at that point you had paid more than $10,000 <coughs> on your plan? Yes. Did you feel that you could walk away from that amount of money? No, no I can't. Although I work, work full time, I pay my bills, I can't afford to lose that much money. And if you had walked away from that amount of money, would you have had enough money uh, to pay for your funeral? I would have had to go into my superannuation. Uh, is the position now that after you sign a formal agreement with ACBF, you will not have to make any more payments to them? Uh, yes, and thank God for that. And you will have $10,000 available for your funeral expenses? Yes, I will. And what do you understand will happen now if your funeral expenses are less than $10,000? I don't know. Do you feel that ACBF would have made this offer to you if you hadn't brought a dispute against them in the Financial Ombudsman Service? No, I don't. I think they thought I, I would just forget about it once again, but not this time. And can I ask in conclusion, Ms Walsh, why you've come forward to tell this story to the Royal Commission? For myself, but for my community, the Yorta Yorta community, that people are in the same position as me, that they think <coughs> that they will get all their money back when ACB know full well that they will only get their policies. People, people haven't been told the truth about these policies. I've got elders that have been in these funeral funds for years and they've planned to give the money to their families so that they can survive. Now these elders will go to their grave not knowing how hard it would be for these families, thinking that, they're, thinking that they've got the money there to help their families. ACB don't know nothing. Do, do they know anything about the Yorta Yorta community? No, they don't. They don't know how many of my elders that are caught up in these policies. My, look, I, I'm, I'm angry, I'm, I'm angry. At no time was I given any information. I have never seen one of your representatives in the Golden Valley. I've had cards put in my door and all, you, all I get at Christmas time is, is a bloody calendar. That's how, much, that's how much you take notice of me. Do you know anything about the community in, within Marutna or Shepparton? It's one of the largest communities and you have not bothered to come down and talk to us. But by God, when people find out about this in my community, they're going to be angry. They're going to be scared. I've got an elder that's been in, in, in a funeral fund for years. And they're only going to get their policy back. These people have been used and used and used over the generations. And it's just another profit making off our backs. Thank you very much, Ms Thank Walsh. You. I have no further questions. Just wait a moment, Ms. Ms. Walsh. Walsh. Ms. Just, Walsh, if you wouldn't mind, just, just might need to wait a bit. Uh, there's a representative here from ACBF who may wish to ask you some questions. What's the position, Mr. McMillan? Yes, I seek leave, Commissioner. Yes. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Ms. Walsh. Uh, could I ask, um, please, for Ms. Walsh to be shown? Uh, document RCD 0024-0016-0003, the plan application form. Uh, 
Now, Ms Walsh, you were asked some questions about this by um, council assisting earlier uh, today, uh, and you said, uh, I think, that uh, you recall receiving a copy of this uh, application form in the mail? Not that I recall, sorry. All right. Um, could I ask you please to look at, um, if uh, Ms Walsh could be shown pages 004 and 005 together on the screen. Uh, you recall um, being shown these pages earlier today, Ms Walsh? Yes, I can. <coughs> Uh, and I think you um, uh, acknowledged in your evidence earlier that the uh, signature, uh, which appears on page 005, which is redacted on the screens, uh, but which you have a copy of in front of you, is your signature? Yes, it is. Uh, when you signed that document, um, was it dated the 30th of November, of November 2005? You'll see the date below your signature. Yes, it is. So did you write that date? or? No, I did not. Um, do you recall whether you in fact signed it on the date that was written there? Not that I can recall. Uh, if the date had been written there and you'd signed it on some other day, would you have um, sought to amend the form to reflect the date that you actually signed it? Not that I can recall. Uh, did you read this form before you signed it? Uh, not that I recall because it's been such a long time ago, 2005. Uh, would you normally read a form like this before you signed it? Uh, Yes, I would, but because it was a funeral and I didn't have anything, I just wanted to get it done so that my parents didn't have to run around trying to look for the money. You'll see on page 005 um, the section above uh, your signature titled, entitled Acknowledgement and Declaration. Can you see that? Perhaps if that section oh, yeah, could be, could be it, yeah. made a little larger for Ms Walsh. Yep, I've got it. Thank you. And you'll see there that um, there are a number of um, numbered paragraphs from one to eight. Right. Uh, and they are in the, those paragraphs are a number of statements um, framed um, as statements in the first person. I have, and the first one is, I have viewed the Aboriginal Community Funeral Plan visual presentation. Right. And you'll see next to it there's a box um, with yes and a box with no, and yes has been ticked. I didn't tick it. All right. Um, <clears throat> when you signed this form, did you observe that um, that box was ticked or not ticked? No, I just signed the form. Uh, did you read through the remaining um, acknowledgements that were there? Uh, very quickly, as far as I can remember. So you understood then, uh, when you were signing the form, that you were acknowledging that you had done the things that are listed in that list of numbered paragraphs? Um, not that I can remember, sorry. Well, you say you read through it quickly. Um, did you understand that you were acknowledging that you had viewed um, the Aboriginal Community Funeral Plan visual presentation? Um, as I said, I, not that I can recall. Uh, and also, the next um, <coughs> numbered paragraph two, um, I have had the plan explained to me. At no time was it properly explained to me, sorry. I was given the opportunity to ask questions and was satisfied with the answers given. When, if you understood how, how important a funeral is and that my parents were on a pension, I just wanted to get it signed and get it um, completed so that the money could be taken out of my pay. It was for peace of mind. Now, the third numbered paragraph um, reads, prior to the completion of this application, I was given copies of the Aboriginal Community Funeral Plan rules and information guide. I was not given that at the start right. of having that plan, and that's as clear as day. But you think you've been given those at some later stage? At a late, uh, many years after that. All right. Um, can I ask you about the um, occasion when the ACBF representative came to um, your workplace. Rumbalara Aboriginal Cooperative, that's my workplace. The Rumbalara, yes? Yes. That's, wh that's where the um, representative <laughs> Yes, the Rumbalara, who was with him. based out of the Rumbalara Medical Centre. And you told council assisting earlier today that um, you thought that person was Aboriginal? Yes, I did. 
Did you ask him um, anything about his kin or his country? Uh, that, if you understood the Aboriginal community, you know that's a very rude question to ask oh. someone. So you made, you made an assumption based on the colour of his oh, skin? It wasn't an assumption, it was just polite. All right. Uh, did, was there anything other than the colour of, of his skin that led you to believe that he was Aboriginal? Uh, well, uh, that uh, Aboriginal funeral funds were Aboriginal. At no stage was I told that they were, <coughs> were not. All right. Uh, could I ask, please, for um, Mrs. Walsh, Ms. Walsh to be shown um, exhibit uh, document ACBF 005. I'm sorry, 0005. Um, 0001, 0002. <clears throat> now, Miss Walsh, this is a, um, a document that's been produced by Mr Jones, the director of um, ACBF, and um, his evidence is that this is a visual presentation that's given to customers. Could I just ask, um, please, for um, the operator to scroll through um, to the next page? Now, uh, do you recall being shown this visual presentation at the time that you signed up to your plan? At no time. And actually, the purple wasn't in it at that time. It was a cream oh. background with the snake around it and with the family in the middle. This, when I was doing my statement, the only time I received that was when you sent papers back. At no time have I seen this. So you've just described a, a document with a cream background and a yes. snake around it. Was yes. that a presentation that you were showing? No, it wasn't. It was just uh, on that um, form I was given and on the policy when I had paid my 8000 I have never seen this document. All right. Um, could I ask, please, for um, Miss Walsh to be shown um, exhibit uh, ACBF... I'm sorry, document ACBF 0007 0001... <coughs> 0021. <clears throat> now, again, this is a document that's been produced by Mr Jones um, and um, his evidence is that this is the information guide that you were provided with your policy? No, it's not. Now, uh, you said a few moments ago that you think you have been provided with a, an information guide at some stage after you signed the application form. I have not seen these documents. The only document I can recall if my, when I got my policy saying that I got 8,000, none of this, the only thing that was on it was the cream background, the snake around it and just the family. I've had, I have never seen any of this paperwork. The only paperwork I have gotten are the, the signed papers and also the policy award, and that was it. I have never, I have never received any of this paperwork. This is the first time I've seen this. All right, I'll just ask. I'll go to another document in a moment, but I'll just ask you to to take note of um, the the words that are printed at the bottom of the the page on that document. The plan is run by a private company, which is not connected with or sponsored by any governmental or similar body or Aboriginal organisation? No. I'm I not haven't... asking for your, for your comment. I'm just oh, asking you to take, take note sorry. of it and I'll show you another document right. if I can. Yep. Um, could I ask, please, uh, for Ms Walsh to be shown document FOS 0039-0001-0170. This is a lecture four <laughs> to your statement, Ms Walsh. <clears throat> Is that the information guide that you recall receiving? That is a sticker and I have never seen any of that work on any paperwork I've received at any stage. But, so this is not the guide that you've just described to me with the... No, the I've never received, I have never received any <coughs> paperwork like that. Now, um, <clears throat> you asked some questions by council assisting about your communications with um, ACBF over the years. Right. And I think you said that uh, <coughs> that, 
the majority of those communications were about um, either changing your payment arrangements. That's right. Um, or increasing your benefit. That's right. Now, <clears throat> you recalled um, telephoning ACBF, uh, and I think you thought it was about 2012, to discuss um, increasing your benefit amount. As far as I can recall. And uh, I want to suggest to you that um, it was when you called ACBF for that purpose <coughs> that it was explained to you that your benefit could be increased but that there would be an additional fee payable by you if it was increased. And that fee was $10,000 and I would have <coughs> to pay $42. At no stage was I told that. I didn't even know about that until I received some of the paperwork in regards to the Royal Commission. So when you suggest that ACBF didn't increase your benefit at that time, it's accurate, isn't it, to say that the reason for that is because you didn't wish to pay the additional premium? Uh, I, I didn't even know about the additional premium. I had not been told about the $10,000 or the $42, $42 a fortnight. Could I ask, please, for Ms Walsh to be shown ex uh, document ACBF.0004.0001 .0001.0011. And um, this is, uh, Ms Walsh, a, uh, a record of communications between you and ACBF, which is next <coughs> to um, one of Mr Jones's statement at um, Exhibit BJ2. And could I ask, please, for... Um, Sorry. For page 0017 to be shown on the screen. <coughs> and the last um, entry on that page um, is an entry from the 6th of August 2012. And it's recorded there. Do you see that? The last entry? The on last that page? entry, Tracy phoned and wanted. <coughs> wanted to know how much it would cost um, to increase her benefit amount to 15,000, explained due to level three and age, the max is 10,000 and would be $42 per fortnight. Explained changes taking place and would add her to our database and so on to increase her benefit amount. No. <coughs> so you deny that that conversation occurred? I deny that conversation. Right. Excuse me, Commissioner. I have no further questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes. Isn't there anything arising? No, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Walsh, you may step down.